Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the sixth chapter beginning with the 10th verse. Paul writes, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. When you look at everything Jesus said and did, one thing is absolutely clear. If you're going to follow Jesus, you can't hit, punch, slap, slam, belittle, berate, or otherwise inflict pain on another person for any reason whatsoever. Of course, there is a big difference between fighting and having a little fight in you, right? Having a little fight in you is when you're facing a challenge and you refuse to give up or give in. Now, parents will know exactly what I'm talking about here. In fact, if you're a parent, you know what I'm referring to when I remind you that you only have 10 days to go. 10 more days and the kids will be back in school. When that happens, you might want to do your best impersonation of Martin Luther King Jr. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, free at last. In fact, do you remember the song, It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas? If you do, then you'll remember that there's a line in that song that says that mom and dad can hardly wait for school to start again. Now, if parents feel that way after a two-week Christmas vacation, I can only imagine how they feel after a two-month summer vacation. So yes, it's good sometimes to have a little fight in you. It's good to have a little fight in you when you're dealing with a serious illness. It's good to have a little fight in you when you're struggling to make a dream come true. It's good to have a little fight in you when you see an injustice that just is plain wrong. And the Apostle Paul will tell you that you also need to have a little fight in you if you're going to be a good Christian. That's obvious when you look at his letter to the Ephesians. Listen again to Paul's words. He writes, Our struggle is against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Paul wrote those words because he knew that the Ephesians were living in a world that wasn't very friendly to the Christian faith. By the way, Paul knew what he was talking about 
when he wrote those words. That's because when Paul wrote those words, he himself was a prisoner because of his faith. He was, as he says, a, an ambassador in chains. Yes, Paul knew that the Ephesians were living in a world that wasn't very friendly to the wisdom and ways of God's only begotten Son. That's why he told them to put on the armor of God, the whole armor of God. Put on, he said, the belt of truth. Put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the breastplate of righteousness and put on the sword of the Spirit. Now, believe it or not, the words that Paul wrote to the Ephesians are just as important for us today. Now, I will admit that I haven't seen any Christians being thrown to the lions recently. But we still live in a society that isn't very friendly to the wisdom and ways of God's only begotten Son. In fact, in some ways, the situation today is even more perilous That's because the Christian faith today is being undermined in a way that is very seductive. It's been going on for many, many years, very slowly, and in ways that you sometimes don't even realize that it's happening. Consider, if you will, this little bit of trivia. Now, if you attend either of the weekly Bible study classes, you can't answer this question, at least not out loud. For the rest of you, though, the question is simple. Can you name the television show that was the first one to show a husband and wife in bed together? Over the years, when I've asked that question, people have come up with answers like, I Love Lucy, or All in the Family, or The Brady Bunch. All of those answers, though, are wrong. Are you ready for this? The first television show to show a husband and wife in bed together was The Flintstones. Are you surprised? Now, it really makes sense when you think about it. You see, at the time, Hollywood was worried that people would be offended. So they decided to test the waters with a cartoon. That way, if people got angry and began to howl, they could always say that they were overreacting. After all, it was just a cartoon, and the Flintstones weren't real people. My, how chimes have changed. Do you remember when Elvis appeared on Ed Sullivan's show, and the cameras weren't allowed to show him swiveling his hips? Or how about the controversy over Barbara Eden's navel on I Dream of Jeannie? Now, fast forward the clock to today and tell me what you see. What you see on television is an endless litany of drugs, of violence, sex, promiscuity, and profanity. And that's just some of the commercials. Sad to say, but you turn to the theaters and some of the movies they're showing there are even worse. What you see today makes what happened 20, 30 years ago seem tame. Yes, the ways and wisdoms of Christ are being undermined very slowly and very subtly. All of what you see on television in the movies is the reason why David Frost, the famous interviewer, once said that television is an invention that allows you to be entertained in your living room by people you wouldn't have in your house. It's also the reason why it's been said that all television corrupts, and commercial television corrupts absolutely. The Apostle Paul was right. We live in a society that isn't very friendly to the wisdom and ways of God's only begotten Son. Just look at the controversy we go through every year over whether it's acceptable to say Merry Christmas or how about sports on Sunday morning or the attitude that says I can worship God on the golf course. The thing I've never understood about that is whether the greens fees are supposed to count toward your pledge. Here's one more for you. Do you remember when the blue laws were repealed? 
If you're old enough to remember when that happened, you'll remember that they were very clear. Stores could now be open on Sunday, but they could only be open after 12 o'clock. The forces of greed, though, began to, to chip away and push the envelope. And as the old saying goes, once the nose of the camel is in the tent, it isn't long before the rest of him follows. So what's a good Christian supposed to do in this world that isn't very friendly to the wisdom and ways of God's only begotten son? What does a mother do who's trying to teach her children right from wrong? What about the guy who works for a company where it's all about climbing the ladder of success in the bottom line? What does he do? What do teenagers do who live in a world full of drugs and bullying and violent video games? Well, I suppose you could rant and rave and blame it all on the Flintstones. Or you could do what an Amish community did many years ago. In the book Future Shock, which was published back in 1971, Alvin Toffler tells a story about an Amish community that packed everything up and moved from their quaint town in the Midwest to the mountains of Peru. When the Amish were asked why they did that, one of them uh, said, we got tired of having to move our wagons to the side of the road all the time to let the cars go by. So with that in mind, you could respond as the Amish did and renounce the pleasures and the pitfalls of the modern world and go to live in a commune somewhere in the middle of India. Or you could follow the advice of the Apostle Paul and put on the whole armor of God. You can put on the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. You can put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. One day, a minister and his son were walking along a beach. While they were walking, the son asked his father a question. Dad, he said, I don't understand how I can live in Christ and he can live in me at the same time. The father thought about it as they continued to walk. Eventually, they came uh, to a bottle in the sand with a cork in it. The father picked the bottle up and put some water in it. Then he put the cork back in the bottle and he tossed it out into the ocean. The two of them then stood there and watched as the bottle bobbed up and down in the water. Son, the father said, the sea is now in that bottle and the bottle is in the sea. That's the way it works when you follow Christ. You give yourself to him and he lives in you. Now I wonder, do you think that's something someone can learn on the golf course on Sunday morning? Do you think it's something you can learn by going to the movies and watching the latest R-rated movie? Do you think it's something you can learn while in the supermarket buying that box of Rice Krispies? Okay, maybe you can rant and rave a little and blame it on the Flintstones. But you also need to listen to the Apostle Paul's advice and put on the whole armor of God. Amen.